Hi guys, I'm going to uh, walk through to the shop and on the way there we'll uh, have a look at a few things that uh, I've made over the years. So uh, first is that uh, these are uh, Adirondack tables and chairs. I uh, made them a while ago <laughs> and I just made them out of uh, tantalised wood, actually gravel board. Uh, just skip planed them and then uh, knocked them together. I'll show you the plans uh, as we get in the shop. Uh, Obviously, the no budding woodworking hobbyist hasn't built a, uh, a bird table of some description. There's one there, and there's one a bit. Uh, I'll see if we can zoom in a bit further back in the garden. Uh, and of course, all the uh, bird boxes. Let's carry it walking. Part of my old course. So this is the, uh, the garage and the workshops in the, in, in the back, so as uh, we go in here, I'll show you a few things. Hopefully, yeah, I'm going picked up. I'm going to first show you this uh, little box which is full of some spanners. That was my first ever woodworking project, and I made that when I was around about seven years old. Uh, it was actually for, uh, I built it for my mum at school. Uh, and it's actually a shoe cleaning box, so you can put shoe cleaning stuff in and obviously put your foot on the when you clean your shoes. So that's that. Uh, these are the uh, folding Adirondack chairs that uh, I built. You can see there's two different sizes, there's a, a sort of flat or large, and there's sort of, sort of, I don't know if you can see it in these words, but it's sort of gents and uh, ladies. Anyway, they're folded away and uh, they'll come out if ever it warms up in this, uh, in this country. Uh, anyway, we'll go through uh, golf and garden equipment, nothing else here. Another uh, point of interest, in a way. This is a uh, old clock from uh, the old factory I used to work at. Uh, used to be a slave to this when I was an apprentice. You have to clock on in the morning and clock off at lunch and clock back on when you come back and clock off at home. Uh, they also use it sort of to time time jobs and the likes. Anyway, I managed to uh, acquire one of them. It does work, but it's extremely loud, and you have to sort of wind it up like every sort of eight hours or so, so I just don't bother anymore. Uh, it used to be in the house, but far too noisy. Okay, so we'll go into uh, what's uh, what's called uh, the tool shed, or my daughter calls the uh, dad shed, and. Uh, I'll switch on the lights. Oh, the other thing I was going to show you before I go in there is that's uh, one of my up and coming projects. That's a large piece of, uh, of ash that I managed to get hold of. It's, uh, I can't see if it's, it's quartz on stuff. Got a live edge on. So I'm going to make a, uh, a coffee table out of it. Uh, I'm going to be following the, the plans on the Wood Whisperer channel. Uh, when that's dried out a bit, it's, it's still running at about 20% moisture rate. Uh, so I just wanted to get it down a little bit more. Right, as we go in, I'll have to put the lights on, and you'll see everything sort of covered in uh, towels. Uh, not that it leaks, but it's uh, humidity because it's a, a steel framed building. Now it's breeze blocked inside and I've actually uh, you see, insulated the roof and uh, down down the wall so it's uh, a lot better in here than it is in the garage part. Uh, there's a door into here which is, which is over here uh, but at the moment in time you'll see <laughs> it's, just, it's just like a barn slide door. It's very drafty so I actually just block it all up and don't use it in the winter months. Uh, okay. Well you'll, you'll probably see parts where we see when we're around in the video, so that's the, the whiteboard, uh, the whiteboard, and that sits over uh, the planar thicknesser. Uh, I'll just take the covers off as I go around. So it's uh, an Electra Beckham planar thicknesser, it's 10 inch. Uh, uh, it got given to me, so uh, beggars can't be choosers on that. Uh, works works fine, to be honest. Uh, I actually use it if I've got rough. Of timber, getting it down somewhere, somewhere like, uh, and then 
go to hand planes uh, sort of in the hybrid way. That's my, my uh, local uh, compressor. I don't tend to use it that much. Uh, it's plugged in, but uh, if I use a nailer or I want to use the, the gun or blow up the tyres of the cars. Uh, back into the corner there. Uh, this is what I call my uh, my sheet store. So I've got a couple of pieces of plywood and some other bits of rubbish uh, behind there. They actually move uh, that way uh, during the summer months uh, if I've not used them. Uh, we've got mice problems. Uh, problems for living in a rural area. Uh, so. Honey is where, where I keep all my, my hop cuts or, or scrap bits. So we've got sort of plywood at the bottom. Uh, the next shelf up is my uh, hardwood. So I've got oak, uh, cherry, and that's quite a lot of stuff. I don't know, but it tends to be Maranti, uh, Sapili, and other stuff that's unknown, like that uh, gatewood. Uh, the next one is sort of a pine, uh, and that's some of the uh, the gravel board I was saying that I met the uh, Adirondack chairs out that was outside. Uh, the next one's a bit of a like old shells, cat shell, a bit of acrylic, some pipe and metal bits, uh, propane, seat rubbish, you know, all that type of stuff. Uh, and on the top, if I can get up there, what the ladders. Uh, this is where I keep sort of quite a lot of my templates uh, for jobs for uh, doing Captain Dice so uh, Adirondack chairs the versus that. Uh, further up, so we've got more storage up here. Uh, that's mainly oak board, uh, uh, peely cherry uh, on them shelves. So we'll get me down. See. <coughs> uh, so, uh, Array of kitchen cabinets. This used to be uh, uh, in my kitchen many moons ago. Anyway, I saved these cabinets and used them. So, uh, cleaning stuff for the blades, uh, guides for the, uh, the the lead dovetail jig. You'll see in a minute. Oh, and uh, my my mouse bait. Uh, and here is uh, the music system and. Uh, few old uh, cassette tapes if people can remember those uh, I tend to use just listen to the radio or there's a you can plug your uh, mp3 player iPod or whatever in there uh, speakers are up there with all sorts of things there's a, an old fridge a couple of eaters all that type of stuff uh, so this is going to be quite interesting you go into these things because I've got I've, I'm a hoarder so I've got uh, all sorts of stuff in here so what we've got in here uh, so I've got a uh, Makita hammer drill. Uh, had it a few years. The three mains driven jigsaws there. Uh, it's, that's a Makita one, and they're two black and deckers. Quite a lot of the time, uh, some of the stuff I've got was uh, my stepfather's uh, or my father's. On the top, there's a couple of black and decker uh, drills. There. Don't tend to use them. Uh, I can't. I'm not got the heart to uh, sort of get rid of them. Uh, in here is uh, look a bit more up to date. It's uh, some Makita uh, battery powered uh, jigsaw, circle saw, uh, multi tool. Uh, these are belts uh, and sanding discs and all that type of stuff for uh, my belt sander, uh, which we'll see in a minute. Uh, in the that's just all bits for the lead jig. Here is the uh, the medicine cabinet, as it were, where I keep all my sort of uh, finishing oils. I'm not sure whether you should keep them in or out. They used to be out on one of the on the shelves I'll show you. Uh, but there's so the, all the various different sort of wood treatments, finishing oils, waxes, uh, linseed oils, and lacquers and all that type of stuff. That tends to be brushes and that. Uh, and up there is just a load more cassettes. Uh, and here, uh, angle grinders and flat discs. More elements, that's from the uh, spindle sander, bobbin spindle bobby sander. Uh, heat gun, stapler, and uh, an iron for doing the uh, iron on strips whenever I do them. Uh, 
rag storage, so old t-shirts and all that type of stuff, I, uh, I tear up and uh, put in there and then use them. Uh, then they just got sort of uh, the glues and oils, uh, white spirits, mineral spirits, brush cleaner, uh, metal lady spirits, denatured alcohol I think it's called in places uh, over there and then uh, glues so PVA glues, fast acting PVA glues, polyurethane and super glues and all that type of stuff and uh, hot glue guns and all that type. So they're uh, that's that bit. Uh, as we go uh, underneath, so that's the uh, the lead jig which I showed earlier. Uh, oh, that's uh, some epoxy resin. Uh, I'm going to need that for when I do the, t the table, uh, the uh, coffee table. Uh, one of the heaters, uh, emergency heater, which is a uh, out of the greenhouse actually. Uh, I use that when it gets really cold. In it, quite warm today. I think it's been absolutely freezing here. Uh, anyway, back to the lead jig. Uh, it's on a it's box. I can actually take it off and uh, store it away. Uh, but it's quite a big box. It used to live uh, up there. I mean, it was a pig to get down because it's that heavy. So I'll leave it there now. Uh, next to that is a little bench mortise chisel. I bought this years ago on a whim. And, and I've got to admit, it's quite a lot of the tools that i got. Uh, you have to blame the new Yankee workshop and Norm Abram because if you see them and then I used to look and try and find some uh, and, and I've never paid quite a lot of money uh, uh, for my tools uh, up until uh, I started renewing them for more up to date modern ones uh, we got uh, down here oh this uh, this used to be my bench it's absolutely uh, a crockapoo. Uh, I mean, it was cheap as cheap as chips, uh, but it's got no, had no weight to it. Uh, it's not stable, so I ended up by I, I sort of. So even that looks decent. It's actually, <laughs> it's actually actually only sort of like a what's that half inch thick. So I've actually beefed up. I put a big slab underneath. I've put some uh, corner brackets onto all the. Uh, I've put some feet to stabilise it. It got me through uh, a few months doing some projects. Uh, that's more. Uh, there's a uh, one of shop vacs. Uh, one of my uh, more expensive uh, outlays. It's a uh, Festool MIDI CTL CTL MIDI. Uh, here we've got uh, look for Roy Orby uh, router table. Uh, it's stopped. It's on some hinges. It drops down, drops some legs down. You just get it out of the way. I've actually got it a bit, look a bit too high. It's just a bit awkward to work in, so it's something I need to uh, move. I keep on reorganising my shop, uh, and I've got it somewhere like where uh, what I what I want it to be. There's just a few things like the router table. I, I don't like it being there. I'll show you where I want it to be. Uh, was where, where it was originally. Uh, Oh, the obligatory sort of roller stand. Don't tend to use that. I uh, find it quite dangerous, really. Now, I'll just show you this. This is now my outfeed table. It used to be my first bench. Uh, I made it myself. Oh, as you can see, you couldn't buy anything like this. Uh, it's got a small woodworker's vice on. Uh, it used to have draw fronts on. At the moment, it's, uh, it's sort of my router station. So, in here. Uh, there are my handheld routers, a uh, really decent Bosch one which I bought a couple of years ago which has got uh, it's a plunge router and a fixed base router, really nice bit of stuff. Uh, three other plunge routers, uh, a bit like a trim router, quarter inch drive, a couple of quarter inch drive ones and half inch drive. Uh, and here you'll find Router bits, oh safety gloves, always think about safety. Uh, more router bits, uh, there'll be collars and the like for routers, and uh, oh, rubbish bits, because uh, that's where I do, you'll see that's where I do my glue up. 
uh, here. So uh, we'll take some more of this off. Uh, this is my uh, first thickness I got. It's a DeWalt uh, 733. Lovely machine, to be honest. Uh, I, I don't think you can get great press. I can't. I can't remember how much I paid for it. I've had, I've had it for quite a few years. It does a great job for me. Uh, it's not too heavy on knives either. You just got to make sure you don't put any nails through there. Uh, that's on a on a cut. That used to be what hold my uh, miter saw when it used to have wings on. So I've just used it to put that on at the moment. It's mobile, but in there uh, more scraps or actually the, the, these are mainly because it's near the glue where I do my glue up stations, the, the coals and all that type of stuff. On there. Uh, and a couple of old toolboxes under there, uh, full electrical gear, so I've got any electrical work there. Uh, just above that, and uh, this is where this is where I want the uh, the router station to be. Uh, I made a, a, a cabinet. Made a cabinet for the for the router bits. So they're all my uh, various router bits, fancy ones and uh, not so fancy ones. So a feather board uh, for the router table. Just held together, so for just a couple of magnets at the top. Uh, next is uh, bandsaw blades. Uh, the bandsaw used to be here, uh, but I moved the bandsaw into the centre to give a bit more room. Uh, I don't particularly like it. Bandsaw gets in where particularly of filming. Uh, anyway, that's there. Uh, big floodlight uh, is the old floodlight off the garage. I use that to. Uh, if I need a, if it's a bit dark and need a bit more uh, more more film in there, uh, above you'll see is uh, my homemade uh, air filter. Uh, it's just actually a, a blower that's in there from a greenhouse blower, I think it is. So I put a couple of filters in, draws it through, and it does a good job. You can see if I zoom into the filter. It's absolutely filthy. Needs uh, I need to clear that out, uh, which I will do. Underneath there. Uh, clamp racks, uh, parallel clamps, F clamps, quick clamps, sash clamps, bar clamps, uh, whatever clamps you can call, uh, three-way clamps for doing edge banding, uh, miters, ratchet straps, and the like. Uh, underneath there, this is sort of my sanding grinding area. So I'll look at the Clark uh, four-inch belt and a six-inch disc sander. Uh, next to that is a little grinder, uh, and, and next to that is another Clark one. Uh, is a bobbin uh, sander. Bought these uh, from Machine Mart, and they were all—I uh, mean, they were all very reasonably priced at the time. About a bad these years. Uh, that's my shop eater, my three kilowatt shop eater. It's not on at the moment. I say it's quite warm. Uh, we go around. It's a, another clock, so it's another uh, machine march march special. It's a, a wood lathe. Uh, quite 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 decent actually for 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 what it is. Quite a lot of uh, bits. So I've got some uh, everything on there. The four jaw chuck and Jacob's chuck for for putting in the end face plates, longer press. All my safety gear up there, and uh, oh, that's uh, the only brace and bit that I own. It's uh, and it was I've never used it to be honest. Uh, it was me, uh, me, it was me dad's, and me, my dad died in roughly 1970. So uh, bought it since then. Never, never used it. <laughs> I just keep it up there. The other one, uh, spring clamps, uh, an auxiliary light, uh, and then we've got some uh, battery drills. My old Makitas uh, and then the, the newer Makitas and the, and the Dewalt. Uh, on the top, I uh, need to find some wood place. I made this uh, repair this box. It's, uh, it's a plough plane. Which has some, uh, something quite interesting that people quite like. I've had to get it out. I've actually got all the original paperwork uh, uh, for this. It's, uh, the Lewin Universal blend, and in there, if I can get it out, I've actually got the original invoice for it. Uh, 
go. It's from Tysaks and Sons. Uh, and it was. I don't know if we can read that. Can we read it? I'll see if we can zoom in. Very difficult. But anyway, it was £6, 19 shillings, and sixpence. Uh, I think there's a date on it somewhere. Uh, yeah, there you go. 19. Oh, 1951, so it's a good few years old. It still works, still does a great job. Uh, up up there, this is uh, my oops, didn't out see it. Uh, chisels. So two lots of Stanley chisels. Uh, the ones, the yellow ones. Uh, with my chisels, uh, the blue ones were my stepfather's. Uh, they still work great, so I can't see why. And uh, the old marksman there was was my dad's. Uh, across there, some carving chisels. I bought some cheap carving chisels. Uh, thought I'd have a go, but uh, I've never really got around to doing it. Can't seem to handle it. On. I'm not going to blame the tools, because that's what a bad workman does. Uh, some more, uh, I think they're called carpenter's chisels, just with a, with a, with a square edge. Just got we're doing a lot of stuff. Uh, and the other side, uh, screwdriver storage. Uh, more batteries for the Makitas uh, and a, a quite a hefty SDS drill. Uh, that's where uh, my uh, rider angle jack plane sits uh, with a uh, shoulder plane and uh, the horning guide. Bought quite a lot of Veritas stuff. Lovely, lovely, lovely made. It's not the cheapest. Uh, across here, saws. So it's a fret saw, then some panel saws, and a Japanese saw. They sit there. Little bench drill. Tiny thing. Uh, Keep on thinking about getting a, a, a larger one, but uh, I've seemed to have got by with this and uh, and drills mainly, so I've kept my money in my pocket for once. Uh, we've got uh, it's a drill cabinet that we made a couple of weeks ago, which is quite nice, I think. Uh, and above that, it's uh, it's called uh, I don't know if you can see that tool locker number four. Uh, this is from my old apprentice training school when I was an apprentice. Uh, when they stopped doing woodwork as part of the apprentice curriculum, they, they sold quite a lot of stuff off. So uh, I managed to buy it anyway. And there's uh, the range of saws, uh, spoke shaves, hammers, marking gauges. And I keep most of my planes. Uh, so uh, a four, five and a half. Uh, so underneath here, we've got, uh, these are mainly cases uh, for the for the various drills, uh, it's a big SDS drill, uh, uh, the drawer above it, I've just got sort of tools that I use with this vice, go next to it, uh, bits for the, for the drill table, a couple of a couple of vices, uh, the, underneath it, you'll see these are the uh, the two chess drawers that we built for all that. So, uh, four boxes. Oh, there. Um, a lot easier doing that than rooting round the back. Next to them is the the other two. Uh, this is my sharpening drawer. So diamond stones, leather, strop. Like, uh, I've got some more sharpening stones when I get underneath here. They're uh, they're uh, carborundum stones, oil stones. Uh, it's a track saw which I'm just making a, a box to put in at the moment. I'm not uh, fill box. It's just an MDF thing that I've just thrown together. Uh, next to that is uh, some of the uh, bit of festival stuff that I've got. Uh, which is, uh, those who know your festival will know what that is. 
So you can guess what that is. <laughs> it's a 71 Ralph plane, records outer plane. A 78 uh, rebate plane. So an old skewed rabbiting plane. Another four, and there's a, a, a two behind there. I was going to convert to either that four or that two actually into a scrub plane, but to be honest, I, uh, I tend to use the machines rather than hand power to remove lots of material. Anyway, so that's there. Uh, oh, just a couple of old, uh, they were, once again, they were my dad's, uh, old paraffin sort of burners. Uh, never use them, but uh, quite, uh, quite keep hold of them, can't, can't lose stuff. Uh, there's some more storage up there, I don't, don't think there's anything on it at the moment. I tend to stick my wood up uh, or fire. Uh, some shelving which has got to go, uh, but uh, part of my... Uh, Oof, dear job years ago was around computer area engineering, so uh, quite proficient in using uh, AutoCAD and a, and, a, and a product called Mastercam, which is sort of a the driving CNC machines and like. Not that I've got a CNC machine. These are the books. This is a uh, the books. I bought these books oh many years ago. Uh, time life. Woodsmith books. Uh, I just wonder where it's got a date on it. I mean, it's actually a bit of mould on the things. But uh, so got they're, they're good for uh, plans and ideas. And uh, all woodwork. I'd always suggest that uh, if you're going to get into woodworking, get yourself some books. So uh, and they were broke. I, I, I say I've had them. I think I bought them once a month or something from a book club. So uh, once a week there was things there. Uh, carving one, the Collins complete woodworkers manual, uh, and the Haywood complete book. Uh, and then uh, I've actually got uh, my latest book is uh, the Hybrid Woodworking by Mark Spagnola, Wood Whisperer. That's the pencil case that we made. Uh, a couple of the ca carry little bits, one of you. Uh, this is quite interesting. It's a it's a very old uh, ninety another nineteen sort of fifties sixties uh, dovetail jig, uh, which you use a uh, a drill to operate, which is uh, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with that. Uh, here we've got storage for uh, nuts, bolts, screws. Yeah. My other shot back. Uh, if I find, I've got it sort of linked up to one of those remote controls. Yeah. That goes through to uh, my micro saw, which says uh, I bought that a while ago. Uh, mainly because uh, I quite like the uh, it, it works on a, a glide system, cantilever system at the back, so there's no great big rods at the back, so it uh, I can actually get it closer to the wall. Uh, because all this, this unit and this old radio alarm drill used to be over there against that wall. I wanted to move them here, but it was taking up too much room. So I managed to uh, find one of those. Uh, not the cheapest, but very nice. And so my old mitre saw was stuck underneath the third one, which is, uh, I need to do something about it. Uh, carpenter's tool tote. Uh, I made that... Uh, a while ago, I say one. I'm out and about. Put my planes in and carry some stuff. That's quite easy. You'll like I say. You'll you'll, you'll see. That I've got all sorts of stuff here. Uh, underneath, uh, it's a bench <laughs> jointer. I've not used that for oof, five years. Don't know whether it works or not. To be honest. I could do with actually sort of uh, putting some of this stuff for sale. Just while we're I'll just turn around. This is uh, my uh, toolbox that I made. It's actually a three stage toolbox. Uh, sort of plywood size. They actually, as you can see, everything's dovetailed. So I dovetailed the top 
to the sides and the sides to each other. Uh, you know, all, all the way around. Uh, I used to do a uh, big Christmas project over the Christmas time, or holiday period, and uh, so <laughs> Uh, it was one that I sit down and, and uh, it took me about two weeks to make actually. It's quite oh the dovetail drawer so oak front, uh, pine sides. Uh, I ended up uh, I lost the the alignment between the lid and there, so I actually put some cladding around just to disguise it, and I think it does quite a good job. Uh, that's the date, and then I think that's 68% is the humidity, the moisture in the. Uh, but I'm not quite sure how to read that thing. But, uh... So when we were talking earlier about uh, Christmas projects, so you know uh, that was one Christmas project. Uh, this was another Christmas project, uh, but like I said, it was over there. Uh, so it's uh, more to some tenons, and it was basically just going to be a source station uh, with some storage. Uh, I just put a shelf there and some drawers and that type of like so that 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 was one Christmas. Uh and then the other Christmas was was this bench. So I had this uh this bench, uh a Rubo Rubo style. It's got uh, so you got tool you can hold tool stuff in here, here and uh this will actually I thought I'd work with one hand, but this will this this will lift out so you can get your clamps through. Flip it round, you've got plenty stop that way. Uh, we've got three quarter inch dog holes that go very long. If it's that uh, plywood box I was saying about, uh, I just put a uh, an end vice, whatever you call it, there uh, for that, so you can actually grip thin stuff in, in there, uh, put leather on all the drills or oh, dogs, dogs it all across so underneath that so I've got the, the Bessie clamps which I use for clamping stuff on the table I've got the Moxham vise, uh, shooting board, squares, uh, no slip mat uh, my winding sticks there are my winding sticks uh, some more winding sticks. Uh, they're the winding sticks that I uh, I use when I made the bench. Uh, I made the bench out of construction timber, but, uh, you know, more just in tenons and uh, dovetail and stuff. You know, so uh, I was quite pleased with it to be honest. Heavy thing, heavy sucker. Where the the other one before and uh, was all over the place. Might have made it a little bit too long, if anything, because it uh, it does dominate the area. You know, it, there isn't that much room to get through. Uh, but yeah, dead man. Uh, gonna put that in. There are all the different intervals. Uh, that's my uh, my various dogs. So, uh, so that was, I think that was Christmas 2016. That was Christmas 2014, I guess. Uh, and I think that was Christmas 2015. Uh, but I've moved that since, so... It, doesn't look as nice as what it did originally because I've had to cut it and shut it and fit it over here because it actually went there around around the corner right around here so in here we got all the stuff related to to the saws a bit of vacuum parts uh, uh, the various blades and these are these are actually blades for uh, the radio arm saw and the table saw. So they're slightly different because it's all down to uh, the type of rake that you've got on, which works best. 
so you've got like a more of a positive rate on here than you do with a uh, table saw. Uh, underneath here, we've got a scroll saw, uh, table saw jigs, uh, nail a gun, nails. Uh, then we get round here. Forget the lamp. I'm, I'm, I've got to look, to look to fix that. We've got uh, an old toolbox. Uh, I made this toolbox as an apprentice. Best of tales I've ever done, I guess you'll say. Uh, but it's uh, you made this as part of your your training, and quite a few other things in there. So quite a lot of things I did when I was training. Uh, bits of all sorts. I've got. I've got this here, so I'm, I'm actually uh, one of my projects. I'm going to use that to make a plane blade and see if I can make a make a wooden plane. Uh, that uh, some other bits and bats that I used to uh, that I made as an engineer. Uh, and then underneath here is it's my sort of centre island. Uh, this is my SIP, sort of 10 inch table saw, 3 horsepower, there or thereabouts. Uh, nice bit, bought this a couple of years ago. Uh, very pleased with it to be honest, better than my, my, my other one, which is a bit lightweight. Uh, chipped extractor, which is mainly permanently hooked up to the uh, table saw or or the band saw. And, uh, we didn't cover the bandsaw before, so this is a bandsaw. Another one that I bought is a, a Dewalt. I bought this for a good few years ago, uh, and I think I got a really good deal on it. Uh, so uh, not not the price of what they are today. So I think it's about a 12 inch. So 10 to 12 inch, which is quite good for me. So uh, having a look round. Uh, That is the workshop. Uh, we've got two skylights in, but they keep on getting uh, algaed up. Uh, so mainly the, the lights are on all the time, uh, even in summer months. So uh, anyway, yeah. Hope that's okay. Uh, first time I've ever done anything like this. But uh, thanks for watching. Uh, any questions? Any comments? Please leave them. Uh, and happy woodworking.